Yes. Yes, Honourable my lord, as we begin, Senior State Council 1, my lord. I appear with Ellen Bodo, Senior State SB, Council 1. SB uh, Digil. SB Digil, my lord. Yes, with? Uh, Senior State Council 1. Yes, with? Uh, with Ellen Bodo. You can remain seated, please. <laughs> okay, my lord. Let's remain seated. seated. Yes. Okay, my lord. Ellen Bodo, my lord. Uh, senior State Council 1, our humble appearance is for the first and second defendants. Yes. Any legal representation for the third defendant? No, my Lord. No, my Lord. Yes. Yes, he speaks for judgment. The judgment is ready and will be delivered now. Ascot, please. I will read the introductions, the reliefs. I will skip the submissions of counsel to save time and I will read the decision portion. Ascot, it goes this way. The claimant initiated this suit against the first and second dependents via a complaint filed on the 13th of January 2021, which was later amended sequel to the joinder of the third dependent by the order of this honorable court made on the 29th of June 2021 by the amended complaint of the 22nd of March, 2021, the claimant seeks the following reliefs from this honorable court. One, an order of this honorable court mandating the defendants jointly and severally to pay the claimant his salaries that was that were wrongfully withheld covering the period of the 26th day of April 2017 and 31st of July 2018, being summed out the claimant as the executive chairman of Yola North Local Government Area pursuant to the decision of the Adamawa State High Court of Justice Yola, nullifying the purported suspension against the claimant. Number two, an order of this honorable court mandating the dependents jointly and separately to pay the claimant his salaries, allowances, and all other monies due to him as the executive chairman of Yola North local government area till the expiration of his tenure on the 31st of July 2018, in line with the Adama State new salary structure for judicial officers, public and political office holders, and legislators as amended law as amended law number 6 of 2007 a5 3 an order of this honorable court mandating the defendants jointly and severally to pay to the claimant his salaries per month in the sum of 811588 naira 87 kobo for a period of 15 months totaling the sum of 12 million naira, 173,833 naira, five kobo from the 26th of April 2017 to the 31st of July 2018, when the claimant's tenure expired in line 
with the judgment of the Adamawa State High Court Number no. Three, Yola, in accordance with the Adamawa State new salary structure for judicial officers, public and political office holders, and legislators. Law as amended to Law Number no. Six of 2007, A Five. Four, an order of this Honorable Court mandating the defendants jointly and severally to pay to the claimant with a furniture allowance in the sum of 90,312 naira times 400%, which is 300, uh, 3,633,024 naira 6 kobo. Severance gratuity in the sum of 2,724,936 naira. Five, an order of the Honorable Court of Appeal mandating the defendants jointly and severally to pay to the claimant with a furniture allowance in the sum of 90,312 naira. 700 and uh, 8,790,000 million seven hundred and ninety thousand naira. F the amount totaling the sum of five hundred and seventeen thousand seven hundred and seventeen naira twenty eight kobo. No, the total amount is uh, sixty seven million five hundred and seventeen thousand seven hundred and seventeen naira twenty eight kobo. Five the sum of ten million naira only as only as special and exemplary damages against the defendants. Six, cost of this suit. Number 10, 10% 10 of the judgment sum from the date of delivery of judgment until the entire sum is liquidated. The amended complaint is accompanied by the claimant statement of facts, written statement on oath dated the 22nd of March 2021, and other loaded processes as required by the extant rules of this court. While the sad defendant did not file any response to the suit, the first and second dependents brought out uh, uh, point a joint statement of defense. On February 8, 2021, the first and second dependents joint statement of defense is accompanied by the written statement on oath of Mr. Joel Tika, dated the 8th of February 2021, and other front loaded processes. Upon the receipt of the first and second defendants' pleadings, the claimant filed a reply to the first and second dependent statement of defense on. Uh, on the 9th of February 2021, the case of the 40s. The case of the claimant is that he is a former chairman of Yola North local government area of Adamawa State between the first day of August 2016 and the 31st of July 2018. That his monthly salaries allowances as the chairman of Yola North local government is in the sum of 811,588 naira 87 kobo only paid through his, uh, his grantee trust bank account that on the 26th of April 2017, the post dependent purportedly suspended slash removed him from the office as the elected chairman of Yolo North local government area that immediately after his purported suspension removal from office his salaries slash allowances were suspended. Clement's witness testified that he uh, that uh, Clement testified that he is dissatisfied with the purported suspension slash removal from office. He filed an action at the Adamawa State High Court, Yola, in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2017 between Honorable Mahmoud Mamman Abba and the governor of Adamawa State and 10 others to challenge same. And that the court in its judgment delivered on the 22nd of May 2019 per Abdul, Aziri, uh, Abdul Aziz Waziri G, as he then was, nullified the purported suspension 
slash removal of the claimant from office and declared same as unconstitutional, null and void. It is the claimant's case that after the judgment, he approached the dependents to comply with the decision of the of the court by paying according to the entire claimant uh, the entire claimant salaries allowances entitlements and all other monies both ways according uh, as a result of the sufficient uh, of, of the uh, decision of the court that in line with the other state new salary structure for judicial officers public and political office holders and legislators as amended Law number six, 2007, F5, his salaries and allowances and other monies include to which one, the sum of 811,588 naira, 887 kobo per month for a period of 26 April 2017 to 31st of July 2018, totaling the sum of 12 million, 173,833 naira, five kobo. Which represent the salaries accruable to the uh, to accrued to the claimant, which was not paid by the by the first dependents. Two furniture allowance in the sum of three million six hundred and thirty three thousand twenty four naira and six kobo severance gratuity in the sum of. 2,724,934 naira. Chairman uh, vehicle in the sum of uh, Ford 2016 model in the sum of 28,500,000 naira. The other allowances in 2017, which stood to uh, stand at the tune of 4,500,000 naira. E, other allowances in 2018, in the sum of 8,790,000 naira. The total amount being claimed stands at 67,517,717 naira, 28 kobo. The case of the first and second dependents is that they are not aware of the uh, that the claimants ever served as chairman of Yola North Local Government Council, that they are not responsible for payment of uh, the claimant salaries, I mean, of uh, payment of salaries of any local government staff, including the claimant. As the state and local government operate separate budgets, that the claimant letters to them were misdirected. In the course of cross-examination, the dependent witness admitted that e-payment platform was created through which salaries are disbursed to local government staff and salaries are remitted from the local government council for payment through the platform which is domiciled in the e-payment department of the Ministry for Local Government Affairs. I will now skip the submissions and read the decision portion. The court's decision. Please. After the conclusion of trial and adoption of final written addresses, this court, in the course of reviewing the case file, felt the need for the parties to address it on two issues. One of which was raised by the dependent at paragraph seven and eight of the statement of defense to the effect that. The judgment delivered by the Adamawa State High Court of Justice in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2017 by Waziri G, as he then was, was delivered without jurisdiction, hence cannot be relied upon by the claimant in this case. The second issue relates to the constitutionality of the Adamawa State Law number 6 of 2007 which prescribes salaries for judicial officers, public and political office holders, and the legislature, which forms the basis of the uh, reliefs three and four of the claimant statement of facts.
The issue is whether the Adamawa State House of Assembly is vested with the power under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended to enact law to prescribe emoluments to persons named under the post schedule to the seed law. That is local government chairman, vice chairman, legislative leader, deputy legislative leader, councillor, councillor supervisory, councillor, secretary to the uh, local government and special advisor, whether it, the, that law is valid and constitutional. This court therefore reopened the case and invited learned counsel to both sides to address it on the two issues. Regarding the first issue, the submissions of the learned counsel to the claimant is that the questions submitted by uh, in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2007 presided over by Honorable Justice Abdul Aziz Waziri, as he then was, were strictly on questions of law as to the interpretation of Section 7 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, Section 28 of the Adamawa State Local Government Administration Law, that the issue in that case was whether the governor of Adamawa State had the powers to suspend or remove the democratically elected chairman of Yola North Local Government Council, that they were not before, this, before the High Court to claim for payment of salaries or allowances which came within the jurisdiction of this court under Section 254C of the 1999 Constitution, that it is the judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction which this honorable court can rely upon and it cannot be ignored as it is persuasive as it is persuasive as long as it has not been set aside the reaction of the dependence council in this regard is that by section 254c1k of the 1999 constitution it is only this code that has jurisdiction over the claimant's claim as per his amended statement of facts that the claimant being a political office holder claiming for his salaries, allowances, or other entitlements, the High Court of Adamawa State has no jurisdiction to hear and determine the claim and that it is only this court that can do so. The learned counsel to the, to the defendant appeared to have jumped the gun because he has completely missed out the point we invited him to address the court. Regarding the second issue, learned counsel to the claimant submitted that section 71 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 guaranteed local government system and section 8 provides, among other things, for the finance of the local governments that Adamawa State House of Assembly had the powers to make laws for the running of the local government as long as the law made by the State House of Assembly has not contravened the Constitution. The law is valid and in line with, with the provisions of Section 7 1 of the 1999 Constitution. Council finally submitted that the law is valid and subsistent and that this court must rely on it. The reaction of the Landed Council to the dependents in this regard is that the law number six of Adamawa State, insofar as it contravenes the Constitution, is unconstitutional. Now, having painstakingly examined all the processes filed, the evidence adduced, and the submissions of Landed Council to both sides in the final written addresses earlier adopted, as well as their respective oral submissions on the court's invitation. I find that the issues formulated by the claimant's counsel in the final address have sufficiently captured the issues in controversy between the parties, and I adopt them in this judgment. At the risk of repetition, I reproduce the, the issues here and there. Thus, one, whether the claimant is entitled to the relief sought against the post and second dependents have a regard to the facts and circumstances of this case. Two, whether the judgment slash order <coughs> in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2017 between Honorable Mahmoud Mamman Abba versus Governor of Adamawa State and another 
is valid and subsisting, and the claimant is entitled to the relief brought in this uh, brought in this in this suit. The third issue, which was added by this court, is whether the Adamawa State Law Number Six of 2007 is valid and constitutional. <laughs> Starting with the first issue, a careful perusal of the reliefs contained in the general form of complaint and the statement of facts reveals that such reliefs are in the nature of special damages. As rightly pointed out by the learned counsel to the dependents at paragraph four of the final written address, the law has for long been settled that a claim for special damages must be specifically pleaded, particularized, and strictly proved. I refer to Uni Iloren Teaching Hospital and Avegunde, SPDC Nigeria Limited versus Tiebo, NNPC and Cliffco, Seven Up Bottling Company VLC versus Augustus, and Mbata against Amenzi. Citation supplied. The rule is that in the claim, it is the claimant who claims that must prove, and in labor relations. An employee can only claim if he slash he shows entitlement and proof of entitlement is shown by reference to the law or document that gives it. See the case of Mr. Mohammed Dungus and others versus ENL, ENL Consortium Limited, sort number NICN slash LA slash 193 slash 2014, the judgment of which was delivered on the peeps of uh, May 2015. The claimant's claim are for salaries, allowances, uh, and allowances due to him. The claimant heavily relied on the judgment of Adamawa State High Court of Justice in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2017, which nullified the claimant's suspension by the first dependent. And the Adamawa State Law number six of 2007 That is Adamawa State New Salary Structure for Judicial Officers, Public and Political Office Holders, and Legislators. It's amended. Apart from the judgment and the law mentioned above, there is no other evidence from the claimant to convince this court that the claimant had actually served as the chairman of Yola North local government in Adamawa State. A claimant, as rightly argued by the defendant, had failed to tender his certificate of return to prove that he was indeed elected into the state office or even a letter of appointment to show that he was appointed as a sole administrator into the state office. The claimant to succeed ought to have led evidence before this court to show how he had emerged as the chairman of Yola North local government and is thus entitled to the reliefs being claimed. This the claimant has failed to do and is fatal to his case. I so hold. The second issue relates to the judgment of the Yola State High Court nullifying the claimant's suspension from office of the chairman of Yola North Local Government Council. The defendant's contention in this regard is that the said judgment is a nullity, having been delivered without the requisite jurisdiction by the High Court. The claimant's argument is that the judgment is valid and subsisting and that the Adamawa State High Court has jurisdiction over the matter. Now, a careful examination of the questions submitted to the Adamawa State High Court by the claimant for determination in that case would reveal that the questions squarely fit into the exclusive jurisdiction of the National Industrial Court of Nigeria under Section 254C of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. It is therefore clear and beyond any dispute that the said judgment was delivered without jurisdiction. Even if the judgment was delivered with jurisdiction, it is only of persuasive effect on this court, for it is a decision of court of coordinate jurisdiction. The law is tried that findings of fact of a court of coordinate jurisdiction should be looked at with respect by the other court, but certainly those findings are not binding on that other court. I refer to the case of Ebiziako versus Nwagobu, 
and another, and Sabana and chemical industry and EFCC and another, citations of light. The judgment of the Adamawa State High Court ably relied upon by the claimant in support of his reliefs in the instant case, having been delivered without jurisdiction, is a nullity and can even be set aside by this court. It is tried that no judge has authority to reverse, vary, or alter the decision of another judge of concurrent or coordinate jurisdiction, except where such decision was arrived at without the requisite jurisdiction. See the cases of ODME and Paladi, SPDC Nigeria Limited, and Edumwe and others, citations of life. This being the case, the decision of the Adamawa State High Court in suit number ADSY slash 56 slash 2017 is hereby discountenanced for the purpose of this judgment. I so hold. The claimant heavily well, relied on the Adamawa State new salary structure for judicial officers, public and political office holders, and the legislature. Amendment Law 2007 which amended the same law of 2002. That was the principal law. The Adamawa State House of Assembly purportedly acting on the recommendation of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission in accordance with Section 84, 124 of the 1999 Constitution and Section 32D of the third schedule to the Constitution enacted the law. This court has invite, uh, invited the parties hearing to address it on the constitutional validity of the above law as it relates to the holders of political office in the local. And counsel to the claimant is that the law is valid by learned counsel to the dependent did not. Now, the one constitutional provisions for, for, for pursuant to which, let me come again, the relevant constitutional provisions pursuant to which the law was enacted by the Adamawa State House of Assembly are section 124 of the Constitution of the 1999 Constitution and section 32D of the third schedule to the said Constitution. A careful perusal, a careful reading of these two constitutional provisions would reveal that local government chairman, vice chairman, legislative leader, deputy legislative leader, council of supervisory, councillor, secretary to the local government, and special advisors are not mentioned therein. It follows, therefore, that section six of the Adamawa State Law number six of 2007 is unconstitutional and therefore void. The State House of Assembly lacks the power to enact law under section 124 subsection five to include persons not mentioned under section 84 and 124 and section 32D of the third schedule to the constitution. This see the case of al to Ibrahim and Bauchi State Government are reported suit number NICN slash BAU slash 01 slash 2017. The judgment of which was delivered on the 29th of March, 2022. My view in this regard is further reinforced by the decision of the Supreme Court in OKD and Anambra State Government and another citations of life where the Supreme Court Per Aboki JSC held thus, and I quote Leonard Council for the Appellant Hearing has argued that a councillor is a political office holder. That may be so. The issue now is whether he comes within the purview of those officers whose salaries shall be determined and charged upon the consolidated revenue fund of the state by the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission. So as to warrant judgment being entered in his favor. To answer this question, I must have recourse to the provisions of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. 
392 laws of the Federation of the RMA FC Act to determine whether the appellant is actually a beneficiary. Section 6 of the Act stipulates that the powers of the Commission as regards remuneration it provides inter alia. 6.1. The Commission shall have power to D. Determine the remuneration appropriate to the holders of the offices as specified in parts E and B of the first schedule to this Act. Here under reproduce is part A and B of the first schedule to the Revenue, Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission Act. First schedule, section six, subsection one, subprogram D, part A, offices. President, the vice president, the chief justice of Nigeria, justices of the justice of the Supreme Court, president of the Court of Appeal, justice of the Court of Appeal, chief judge of the Federal High Court, judge of the Federal High Court, judge of the Federal High Court, uh, judge of the Federal High Court, judge of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Grand Caddy and Caddies of the Sharia Court of Appeal of the Federal Capital Territory, President and Judge of the Customary Court of Appeal of the Federal Capital Territory, Inspector General of Police, the Auditor General of the Federation, and the Chairman and members of the following bodies, namely the Code of Conduct, Biru, the Code of Conduct Bureau, the Federal Civil Service Commission, the National Electoral, Commi uh, National Electoral Commission, Independent National Electoral Commission, the Federal Judicial Service Commission, the National Population Commission, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, the Nigerian Police Force, and the Public Complaints Commission. Fat B, offices, governor, Deputy Governor, Chief Judge of a State, and the Judge of the High Court of a State, Grand Cadi and Cadi of the Sharia Court of Appeal of a State, President and Judge of the Customary Court of Appeal of a State, the Auditor General of State, the Auditor General of the Local Government Council of State, and Chairman and members of the following bodies. That is to say, the State Civil Service Commission, the State Judicial Service Commission, and the State Local Government Service Commission. It follows therefore from it follows therefore that this it follows therefore that the section that section six of one sub D of the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission Act makes no mention of councillor as one of those public officers or public office holders to benefit from payment of salary and emolument from the consolidated revenue fund and whose salary shall be fixed by the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission. The argument of the Learned Council for the appellant is that the scope of political office holders whose names were not mentioned have been expanded in Section 6, Subsection 1, sub F of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission Act, which provides that the Commission shall have power to discharge such other functions as may be compared on it by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, this act or any other act of National Assembly. The learned jurors continued that this stance by learned counsel is with respect and tenable. <coughs> <coughs> the simple reason is because those other functions that the Commission ought to have performed, ought to perform, or from which extra power may be compared on it by the Constitution, Act, or any other Act of National Assembly, do not envisage expanding the scope of political office holders or public, office, or public officers whose names have not been mentioned under uh, either by the Constitution, the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission Act itself, or any other Act of National Assembly. Assuming but not conceding that the scope is to be expanded in the clear and unambiguous words of Section 6.1F of the Act, it is only the Revenue Mobilization Act itself, the Constitution or other Act of National Assembly that expand the scope of powers thereof are not an imperial legislative house like that of a number of states 
House of Assembly in our case, Adama State House of Assembly. The Lana juries continued. I am therefore in total disagreement with the submissions of learned counsel for the appellant that the provisions of section 32D item N, part one of the third scheduled to the 1999 constitution as amended, expands the scope of the commission to include counselors. The section states in earlier that, section 32 of the third schedule, that the commission shall have power to D, determine the remuneration appropriate for political office holders, including the president, vice president, governors, deputy governors, ministers, commissioners, special advisors, legislatures, and, uh, and the holders of offices mentioned in sections 84 and 124 of the constitution. The import of section 32D, Item N, part one of the third schedule to the 1999 constitution as amended, which in my view is an assemblage of section 84 and 124 of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, as well as section six, sub so one D and F of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission Act, is that the inclusion of local government councillors by the Anambra State Law Number no. 7 of 2001 in the list of political office holders or public officers of whom their salaries shall be fixed by revenue mobilization, allocation, and fiscal commission and charge upon the consolidated revenue fund of Anambra State is at variance with the express provision of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Learned Council for the Appellant had contended that as a councillor of the initial local government, the appellant is a legislator as envisaged by the by section 32D item N, part one of the schedule of the constitution. As rightly held by the court below, it would appear there was a legislative device to deliberately exclude political office holders like councillors who are legislators as of right on their local uh, on their local government here of government. However, they are not legislated properly, so-called as envisaged, as envisaged by the constitution in section 318, subsection one thereof, which states that in this constitution, unless it is otherwise expressly provided by or the context otherwise request, legislative house means the Senate House of Representative or House of Assembly. The Legislative Council of Local Government is not mentioned by the Constitution, so by extension, council is not recognized by the Constitution as member of Legislative House properly so called. Again, Section 318, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, defined the public service of the state to mean the service of the state in any capacity in respect of the government of state and include service as mentioned in subparagraphs A to G thereunder. What is more, section 120 of the 1999 constitution as amended, which is, which in subsection one establish the consolidated revenue fund of the state stipulates in subsection two thereof that no money shall be withdrawn from the consolidated revenue fund of the state except to meet expenditure that is charged upon the fund of this uh, upon the fund by this constitution or where the issue of those monies have been authorized by an appropriation law supplementary appropriation law or law passed in pursuance of section 121 of the constitution it follows therefore that the expenditure that is to be charged upon the fund by this constitution shall be at stipulated by section 124, subsection 4 of the 1999 constitution as amended. The consequence of the above is that the inclusion of chairman of local government, vice chairman, secretary to local government, supervisors, special advisors, slash personal assistants, to the chairman, leader of the local government legislative council, deputy leader, and councillors 
by the Anambra State Law Number no. Seven of 2001. In our own case, the Adama State Law uh, Law Number no. Six of 2007 and the Principal Law and the Principal Law of 2002 in the list of political office holders or public officers whose salaries shall be fixed by the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission and charge upon the Consolidated Revenue Fund of Anambra State in our own case, Adamawa State, is against the express provision of the Constitution of Section 124, Subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The Lana jury concluded, the Lana jury the concluded Lana. by saying, I therefore answer the question whether the Court of Appeal was correct when they held that local government councillors do not come <coughs> within the purview of political office holders in Section 32D, Item N, Part 1 of the third schedule to the 1999 Constitution as amended in the affirmative and resolve this issue against the appellant. End of quote. Now, applying the above principle to the instant case, I declare that to the extent that it includes the persons listed in the fourth schedule, the Adamawa State Law Number no. 6 of 2007, which prescribes salaries for judicial officers, public and political office holders, and the legislature, is unconstitutional, null and void and of no effect whatsoever. In the final analysis, for all the reasons stated, I find no merit in the claimant's case. It fails in its entirety and is accordingly dismissed. I so hold. Judgment is entered accordingly. I make no order for costs. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, most sincerely, uh, my lord, and in fact, uh, my position has uh, drastically changed. I have learned a lot today from this judgment, particularly on my idea relating to local government as an organ of government. I have realized that there are a lot of work to be done in as far as right relating to emoluments, entitlement, and what have you of local government staff. Thank you most sincerely. I have definitely learned a lot today. Thank you. are welcome. You are welcome. My Lord, my Lord, on the part of the first and the second defendant, my Lord, we are sincerely grateful for the welcome. on the judgment delivered now, my Lord. We are most You're welcome. Glad. Thank you. Uh, and, that is uh, all. Uh, we want to most sincerely thank you. We have enjoyed your, your, enjoyed your stay in Laura because I don't know whether we will meet again. And we wish you so sincerely. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That is all for the day. Thank, thank you, you for your time. The caution rise. Thank you, my thank you.